Hey guys, if you have been graphing rational functions, I'm willing to bet you have been finding horizontal and slant asymptotes, okay? And if you've been doing that, you've probably been told this set of rules, right? Which is great. We love rules in math. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it, right? But at some point you might start to wonder, where did those rules come from? Why do they work, right? Good for you if you've thought that, okay? So these are our rules, right? It has to do with the degrees. If the top is bigger than the bottom, if they're equal or if the bottom is bigger than the top, right? It means different things for my horizontal asymptote or my slant asymptote, okay? So as you can see, all of these are division problems, right? So when I actually divide these, it tells me something about the shape of my graph, okay? In the form of horizontal and slant asymptotes. So this first rule here, you've been told if the top degree is bigger than the bottom degree, like here, right? My biggest exponent, on top and bottom, the top one is bigger than the bottom. So you've been told, go ahead and do long division and that will give you your slant asymptote. Now, when I do long division here, I'm not actually gonna do it. If you need a review on that, I'll link a video in the corner. But when I do the long division here, I end up with X minus two, okay? And you leave the remainder off, right? So my slant asymptote here is Y equals X minus two. Okay. Now, what about when the top degree and the bottom degree are the same, right? We've got squared on top and squared on bottom. Well, you've been told if they're the same, just divide your leading coefficients, right? So it would be two over one or just two. But where did that come from? Well, guess what? Just like over here, we just did long division. Okay. Let's take a look at it really fast. So if I have x squared, plus 3x minus 8, and I divide that into 2x squared. I don't have an x, but I'm going to represent it with plus 0x minus 9. Okay, when I go ahead and check this and I say, okay, how many times, or what do I need to multiply x squared by to get 2x squared? Well, I'd multiply it by 2, right? 2 times x squared would give me that 2x squared plus 6x. I don't really need to do this part, but we're just doing it for the principle, okay? <laughs> when I do that, I end up with negative 6x plus 7 as my remainder. But we're not too worried about the remainder here, right? We're just worried about that 2. Look, that is where we got that 2 from. So we could just have divided those leading coefficients, okay? So in this case, y equals 2. We just did the same thing we did here but we got a horizontal line instead of a slanted line, right? Now, this last one is when the bottom degree, sorry, the top degree is less than the bottom degree, right? So, oh gosh, let me just move that paper on accident. This one's exponent is really like a one, right? So we have x to the first plus three over x squared minus eight. So the top is less than the bottom, right? Well, I want you to think of this, first of all, if I tried to divide this like I did here, I would have x squared minus 8 on the outside, and then I'd have x plus 3 in here. So it would be what times x squared is going to give me x, and that kind of hurts my brain a little bit, right? I'm not saying it's impossible to figure out, but that hurts my brain, right? So I'm thinking I kind of want to put a big old zero there, right? <laughs> Another way to think of this is if I were to plug in a number for X, say I plug in five. So I would get eight on top and then on bottom, it would be five squared gives me 25 minus eight, which would give me 17, right? So eight seventeenths, that's less than one, right? And the more numbers I plug in, like if I plug in a hundred, the numbers are gonna keep getting bigger, but the bottom number is gonna get bigger a lot faster than the top number, right? Because its degree is bigger. So it's going to keep getting closer and closer and closer to zero, right? So that is why when the top degree is less than the bottom degree, our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Okay. I hope this made sense. And if you don't love just like memorizing rules, hopefully this will help it stick in your head a little bit better. If you want to see a bunch of examples of graphing rational functions, because why wouldn't you? I'll link a playlist in the corner. Thanks.